Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about morphogenesis and morphogen. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So morphogen is a substance. It is a chemical that specifies cell facts. It is produced by source cells in the embryo and diffuses through surrounding tissues during early development such that concentration gradients are set up. Highest concentration of morphogen is at the point of synthesis that is the source cell and lower concentration as the morphogen diffuses away from its source and ultimately it degrades over time. So in this picture we can see these two blue cells are the source cells. They release morphogen and these cells receive morphogen. So these cells are nearby the source cells. So these cells are getting higher amount of morphogen and these cells are away from the source hence these cells are getting lower doses of morphogen and based on this gradient unspecialized cells differentiate into different cell types ultimately forming all the tissues and organs of the body so we can see here a gradient is formed this is the gradient of morphogen from highest concentration to the lowest concentration. In this way the gradient is formed and these brown cells are actually unspecified cells. These are undifferentiated cells. These cells will be differentiated based on the concentration of morphogen they are receiving. Okay. Now morphogenesis. So the organization of the cells of the body into functional structures is called morphogenesis. Now the question is, how do morphogens determine cell fate? Okay, so embryonic cells are divided into different types according to their position relative to the source of the morphogen. So here we can see the position of different cells are different relative to the concentration of morphogen. The morphogen forms concentration gradient that divides cells by inducing the expression of different target genes at distinct concentration thresholds. Cells far away from the source of the morphogen will receive low levels of morphogen obviously and they express only low threshold target genes. Cells close to the source of morphogen will receive high levels of morphogen and will express high threshold target genes. Distinct cell types emerge as a consequence of the differential gene expression. Now we will see a classic example of the morphogen. So bicoid and hunchback, these two are most important proteins for patterning of anterior parts of the drosophila embryo. Anterior parts of the drosophila embryo means head and thorax. So this bicoid, it is the first discovered morphogen. It is necessary for the establishment of the anterior structures because it establishes a gradient of bicoid protein whose source and highest level is at the anterior end. So you will get the bicoid protein in the highest amount in the anterior end. And this bicoid protein, it is actually the transcriptional activator of the other protein that is hunchback. Nanos and caudal, these two are important in the formation of posterior segments of the drosophila embryo. Nanos protein, it creates a posterior to anterior slope and is a morphogen that helps in abdomen formation. It binds to the hunchback mRNA and blocks its translation in the posterior end of drosophila embryos. Bicoid blocks 
translation of caudal mRNA. Hence, caudal protein is of lower concentration at the anterior part of the embryo and at higher concentration at the posterior part of embryo. So we can see that bicoid is the morphogen that is found at the highest amount in the anterior part of Drosophila embryo. And nanos, it is a protein that is also a morphogen and it is found at the highest amount in the posterior end of the embryo. So here is the schematic. Bicoid and hunchback, these two are proteins which are found in the anterior part of the embryo and caudal and nanos these two are posterior proteins that is found in the posterior part of the drosophila embryo this bicoid enhances the expression of hunchback protein in the anterior end of the embryo and the bicoid blocks the expression of caudal protein hence the caudal is found in the posterior part only not in the anterior part. Nanos blocks hunchback expression. Hence, hunchback is not found in the posterior end of the embryo but it is found only in the anterior end of the embryo. So this is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture. Thank you for watching my video.